If you haven't noticed by now, organic chemistry almost has a language unto itself. Hopefully by the end of this program, we'll be able to visit this molecule I have here on the left and be able to identify some of its constituent parts. Today, I just want to do a summary of all of those functional groups. Now, what I mean by a summary is I want to review the class or the family of the organic chemical, be able to clearly identify its functional group, and also state the name of the functional group. In some cases, the class and the functional group name are the same. In some cases, they're different, and you need to take careful note of that. I'll also quickly look at naming some of the chemicals with up to three carbons in them, and also provide their condensed structures. So let's begin with the unsaturated and saturated uh, carbons. So my first molecule I'll look at are the halogenoalkanes, recognizable by the carbon bonded to a halogen. And that functional group is called the halogeno group. In my example here with the three carbon chain, propane would be the root name and then attached to it one bromo, one being the address of the bromine. You might recall that these halogenoalkanes like to undergo substitution reactions with things like sodium hydroxide, where hydroxide would replace the bromine group. Here are some unsaturated hydrocarbons, the alkene family and the alkyne family, recognizable by their functional groups, the alkenyl and the alkynyl functional group. In our first molecule, this would be called prop-1-ene, and our second one, prop-1-ine. Now, in this particular case, the address of the double or triple bond doesn't necessarily need to be given, as it is the, by default the only possible location. So in this case, the location of that multiple bond could be dropped out of the name, and it would be considered all right. These molecules like to go on addition reactions, where the multiple bond would open up and accept things like water or halogens like chlorine or bromine. And you can also add halogen chlorides to them as well. Let's look at some oxygen-derived chemicals, the alcohols and the ethers. These two are structural isomers of each other, meaning they share the identical chemical formulas. Alcohols, recognizable by the presence of the hydroxyl group, and ethers by the presence of that oxygen in the middle of the carbon chain. My first molecule would be called propane-1-all. Again, the location of the OH group, the hydroxyl group, has to be designated by a number. You might recall alcohols can be primary, secondary, or tertiary, and that in turn affects their fate when they're oxidized. Ethers, by the other hand, they're identified by the longest chain, the presence there of ethane, and attached to the ethane molecule methoxy group. As mentioned, alcohols, when they're oxidized, can produce aldehydes and ketones, both recognizable by the carbonyl functional group. What is different, however, is its location. In aldehydes, they're at the end of the chain, and the name is designated as propanal in this case. Al, indicating a doubly bonded carbon, is at the end of a three-carbon chain. Propanone would indicate that the doubly bonded oxygen is in the middle of the chain. And in this case, the two is not necessary, as it's the only possible location. Once I get to four or five or six carbons, then that address would be necessary. Now, if I continue to oxidize my um, aldehydes, I can end up with my carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids are recognized by the carboxyl group, the doubly bonded oxygen, and the OH. This particular molecule will be called propanoic acid. You might recall that the acid behavior is due to the release of that hydrogen that's attached at the OH site. Esters are formed by the combination of a carboxylic acid with an alcohol and there I've identified the ester functional group. The name of an ester is derived from the acid from which it is made. In this case, ethanoic acid will form ethanoate, and methanol was the alcohol, so this would be called methyl ethanoate. The next group of compounds I wanna go through, a little asterisk to note about them. Um, IB expects us to be able to classify them and identify the functional group but we are not required to name these molecules, so I'm gonna skip the naming. So these all have nitrogen present, and I'll begin with the amine group, identified by the functional group, the amine, the nitrogen, at the end of the chain, or even in the middle of the chain. Amines can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many carbon chains are attached to the nitrogen. This would be an example of a primary amine 
because I have one carbon chain attached to the nitrogen. Down here I've shown a secondary and tertiary amines which have more um, carbon chains attached to that nitrogen. This is called the amide family identified by the carboxy amide group, the presence of the doubly bonded oxygen to carbon as well as to that nitrogen. And finally the nitrile group uh, recognizable by the carbon triple bonded to nitrogen. So again, you need to be able to recognize these, but not necessarily name them. And finally, my aromatics, uh, which are parts of what they call the arene family, and again, identified by that ring, which is I call the phenyl group. Now, if we take a look at the molecule I had earlier, it comes from Tylenol. It's the active ingredient in Tylenol, acetaminophen. And let's just review some of the groups that we see in that molecule. So hopefully the ring, the phenyl group stands out. The presence of that hydroxy group indicates perhaps this could be a member of the alcohol family. And finally, carboxyamide group. So I hope you found that useful. Again, comments and questions are welcome. And uh, thanks for, again for watching.